Welcome to the Chubcat Art Channel. My name is Ting, and today I will be sharing a tutorial on the brush settings in Procreate. As I go along, I will also share which settings can make unique brushes, such as stamps, patterns, and color changing brushes. So if you're just learning to Procreate, or this is the first time you're making your own brush, this is a tutorial for you. This is a tutorial that talks about the basics and getting you comfortable with the settings and manipulating them so you can make your own brushes later on. So I'm going to start with the most basic of brushes in Procreate. It's a default brush called Monoline. So I'm just going to go over to the brush panel, click on it, and then click on Monoline. And we're going to see here is different tabs of different settings. There's a square panel over here where it gives you a preview of what the brush will perform and the effects as you're adjusting the options. And you can also draw on it as well to see how it also performs, which is a very handy interactive way to see how your brush settings will impact the brush. And we'll start with the stroke path first. So what spacing really does is just actually just spaces your brush out to different dots or one single line. Jitter actually does the same thing except it just um, spaces them out more sporadically. And fall off is actually just a fading uh, option for you to fade your brush. So next I'm going to talk about stabilization. Stabilization really means the how stable your brush stroke is as you put pressure onto the canvas surface. So I'm actually going to switch and use like a different brush like brush pan to show you what I mean by this. So let's say you have no settings um, chosen. So when you click done you know how you can see how scribbly and messy it is but when you go back and adjust the streamline and stabilization click done let's undo this it becomes a lot more stable and of course you can tweak it so you can um, have a much more fluid brush stroke like so Let's undo this and I'll talk about the next setting. So going back to monoline, let's head over to taper. So what tapering really does is just tapering the end of the brush stroke. So let's say we don't have any of the, the options selected. So we can click done. You see how there's no tapering whatsoever. It's one stroke of line. However, when you update this, let's say you bump all this up pressure tip click done you, you notice how there's at the edge when you first start your stroke there's a tapering so next I'm going to be talking about another setting which is probably one of my favorite settings in the brush studio which is shape so the shape actually allows you to create stamps and very cool brushes so let's say the shape currently is a round circle that is part of our monoline brush however you can import your own stamp or go to the source library, which is actually um, a secret hack I've shared before, um, where you can add some other brushes that's already part of the Procreate library. And there's a bunch of different shapes you can use. So let's say we wanna do solid rectangles. Click done. We wanna bump this up a little bit and adjust some of the settings. Mm -hmm including maximum size like so. And then we're up to jitter. So essentially you can create like this fun little brush as a stamp. So I just cleared all the brush settings so I can just show you specifically what the green brush setting does. So if you click here, so you can import your own artwork you to include or go back to the source library. So I already um, copied some kind of artwork I did, so I just put paste. But before you go to your, and close it out, go to auto repeat. And this creates a kind of a cool pattern. You can adjust this so just enough so it hides the white part, like so. Click done. So I know right now you don't see anything, but just, we're gonna have to update some settings so you can see what it actually looks like. So you can actually go to properties and bump up the brush behavior to maximum size and do little, little things. 
like updating the scale and bring it back down and bumping up the minimum size of the brush behavior then you can see the pattern a little better let's go back to scale and bump it up so there's a little bit of tweaking between different settings to get how you want your brush to look so let's for instance click done so after some adjustments on my end I'm able to create kind of like a patterned brush that shows the same repeating artwork and what's really cool about this is that you can still do a color fill where you can see some gaps like so so you can create a really cool color pattern this way so for the rendering setting this allows you to control how you render your brush strokes the setting gives you the ability to make effects that look like a physical paint on a canvas. I'm not going to go too deep on this, but essentially if you want more of a solid base color, Intense Blending would be the one to go with. For Wet Mix, this allows you to transform existing painting to more of a blending brush, similar to the effects of a smudge tool. So for example, if I just bump some of these settings up, you can see there's some fun little brush settings you can see kind of blends and manipulates the brush in this way as an example I'm going to show you what this looks like so it's kind of a blending brush which is great for smudging any of your artwork or creating any kind of faded um, effects next up we have color dynamics which allows you to manipulate the brushes colors so if you just for instance bump these two settings up then you can see how there's some color added to the brush preview. So when you click done, this is what it's gonna look like. So there's a bunch of different options to play with when you adjust the settings. So play with these and see what kind of colors you like to add to your brush if you want that for your brush. Last but not least, we have the dynamic setting. This allows you to change the speed and size of the brush as well as the opacity. So what that means is Let's do a wavy brush stroke here. If you adjust the size, you can see how it manipulates it in this way. If you go lower and then once you go higher, it thickens the brush stroke. So different way to adjust your stroke and setting as well as the opacity. As an example, this is what the brush looks like. So you can see that there is some opacity and then the brush size and speed is variable based on the dynamic settings we selected. So these last couple of settings are related to just the pen setting itself. So let's say we'll start with the Apple Pencil. You can change, let's do a stroke here, you can change the size and manipulate that in that way based on your pressure. You can also set the opacity as well as bleed, you can see the changes as you go along here. So what pressure means is the harder you press, the thicker it will be. The lighter you press, the lighter it will be. So for instance, click done. You can see the lighter pressure I put, the lighter the brush line weight is. But if I apply more pressure, the thickens the line weight becomes. For the property settings, this allows you to adjust the maximum and minimum size of your brush along with the maximum and minimum opacity. The material settings allows you to add a metallic or a rough effect that creates kind of like real world materials and finishes from matte to shiny as a brush and this works really good for 3D paintings. The materials brush essentially allows you to create like any kind of material brush like stucco, concrete, things like that. And the metallic source allows you to add kind of like a brush grain, some texture um, as a way to include in your brush. The last setting of the brush doodle is the about this brush where you can add your name and add your signature. This is great for when you want to sell your brushes so you can keep a inventory of who the creator was. I hope this was a helpful tutorial in understanding the brush studio settings in Prograde and giving you an idea of how easy it is to create your own brushes. I used to be scared of making my own brushes but after watching YouTube tutorials and videos um, I got more comfortable using the Procreate app, so it's been freeing to make my own brushes like this 3D brush here. 
So you can make your own logo, stamps, and do so much with brushes, including making really cool patterns and improving efficiency to your art workflow. I'm cheering you on in your art journey. So happy creating and thanks for watching.